I received a lot of positive feedback on showing uh, different ways to use the Handy Quilt Reversa tool in our quilting. I've met a lot of people who've purchased this, but just haven't used it within their quilting. And while Handy Quilter does a great job at giving you some options, uh, sometimes it just helps to see how we might actually use those in our quilting. So I'm gonna show us how we can do a little spine with some leaves on it in a border. Great option. If you know free motion quilting, you can combine this with your free motion quilting. So I drew a three inch border and I also drew a line right in the center of it. So these would be, uh, these would be the seams. The center line you would draw, that gives you a guide as to where the tool goes up and down. Then I'm gonna find how far I want to go above or below that center line. And I'm just going to determine that myself, what I like. So when I find it, and I can see how far it goes above, then I remember that I'm going to actually be going a quarter inch beyond that because the needle will go in a quarter of an inch away. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark that with the tape. Make sure that you've got uh, equal amounts on each side of the center line that's on the versatile. Then I put that tape on there. It's just tape that I use for embroidery and I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna go and put that the needle in the center line right beside the versatile. And this gets slightly tricky, but you get used to it as you go. Then there is a center line marked right up at the top. And if you can't see it when you stitch, you can just go ahead and mark that with a piece of tape too, if you want to. But I can see that. So I'm gonna go up to that center line and then I'm gonna stop. Then I'll take the tool away. Okay, and I'm gonna bring it back. And I'm going to, at an angle, come down to maybe, um, oh, not quite half an inch before I reach this line. And I'm just gonna cover, follow this, the guide here on this tool. And I'm just, it's just my own creation. Then I'm gonna rotate it. And I have to be a quarter of an inch away, so I eye that. And I'm gonna come back. Rotate the tool if you need to. Then I can come back to where I was at, get that tool right back on that line, take one stitch, and then come back down to the line. Now I'm gonna rotate my tool, put the top of it, put that line there, and I'm gonna come halfway again. And I can rotate it to whatever angle I want. Come back up. And then the way I lay it this way or this way, so I got a skinny uh, leaf over here, I can change it, the angle of what I've got. So the more that I, of, that I get beyond the, the left side of the leaf, the more angle, then the fatter my leaf will be. Now I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna make sure I'm about a uh, quarter of an inch away from that point, and then I'll come on down. And that gives me just a little bit of a fatter leaf. And you can play with that to see what you like. Then I'll get um, the Versatool back on that line. I'll take just a stitch up and down to make sure I'm good. And I'll come back up. We'll rotate it and continue the same way. So you can play around with your leaves, but they don't have to be the same. In life, in life leaves are not all the same. Oh. So we can rotate it. Get that center line right in the middle if you want to, and then you can get uniform leaves. There we go. Take it back here. Touch the line that we just were at. 
and then we'll come back down. Okay, and then we'll take a look. Um, I'll get out of that, and we'll take a look at that little leafy spine. There we go. And just by rotating that VersaTool, we can get a little leafy spine and it does not have to be perfect. Real quick, let me show you that you can also use this for a seed stitch. So I've got a little uh, three inch block and I can use that VersaTool by and I'm going to take this pink tape off of here so it doesn't confuse you. So I can put my needle in my box right in the corner. It's not marked real good. I'll bring my stitches up. Or my threads up, I should say. Then I'm going to put my uh, Aversa tool up to the point where I have a quarter inch clearance there. Now you learn to eyeball that quarter inch, but if you're off, you can adjust as you approach. So I'm wanting a quarter of an inch where the plexiglass is that far away from the corner. So let's see how we do. Come around. We'll go right in that corner. And we can go around doing the same thing. So I'm going to put it right up against the ruler foot, and then I want to adjust it so that I'm about a quarter of an inch away from the corner on the next side. And if I need to adjust it when I come around, I can do that with just a little bit of movement on my hand. I'm going to do the same thing on that. That one might be off because I have a hard time seeing it. I can adjust it if I need to. There we go. And I messed up coming out of there. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. And I'm going to stitch uh, cut my threads real quick. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the plans to come right in that corner. And I'm really at an odd angle. I like to stitch coming down. So I'm going to move that so that hopefully I can get right in that corner. So let's give it a try. We'll go up and down and not make an ugly look. This time. And we'll come down hopefully right in that corner. So there we have um, the little curves around your blocks. Now this is small and you think, well, that's fine, but it's not going to be helpful for much. Well, let's just stitch down and I stitched out a larger circle. So what we can do is we can break it in half. I, this was six inches. So we'll break it in half. And then I marked actually a quarter of an inch to each side of it. So I had some guidelines. So I'm going to go over. This is going to stitch over to the corner here. I know this won't look pretty, but it'll help on time. And I'm going to put my VersaTool right towards to where... Um, the edges of this is right on the mark that I made, and then I'm going to go ahead and stitch. And that should get, bring me right to that center mark. And then I can do the same thing here, and I didn't mark the corners, I just marked the middles. And then hopefully I can eyeball it good enough to bring it into the corner. And if I can't, I'll just adjust it. There we go. I'm going to rotate this. So then we can just do a, um, a double stitch. So you can break down your block into multiple stitches. Um, it can You can use uh, whatever size and just divide it using whatever distance you want to on the 
uh, on this curve with the VersaTool, and this goes up to four inches. The more narrow, the more you're bringing it down closer, of course, the more narrow your design will have. The further out, like I did, obviously you get a wider design or a, de a more deep design, so that's up to you. So um, it's great for doing the seed stitch around your um, Let's block. Let's go back and look at a border real quick. Another border with the edge of this um, versatile. And I, I'm i just drawing three inch borders. I have no, no idea why. Um, you could do it with other ones. Smaller borders, you would just need to um, adjust. Uh, larger borders might take a little bit more effort, but from three inches down, uh, I know you're I know you're good because the handy quilter touches that real well and goes right over the um, middle line. So let's see what we've got. If we put this line that's right at the edge of the curve, at the bottom edge of it, if we put that line right on the bottom of our border. So it would be the seam. And I forgot to bring my bobbin up, but I'm just going to go ahead and go in. So again, remember, things don't have to be a rush on um, the yin. So we're just going to come all the way down, and we're going to come right to the bottom of the border. Then I'll move over, and I'm going to put that same line there again and continue. I'm using my left hand to move the fabric set together. Come down to the borderline, and let's do one more. I know we have one more that we can do. Up we go. Okay, and I just drew something that would work. So now let's go over to the other side. I wouldn't normally do this. And I'm just going to go over a little bit. So this may not be exact, but I'm going to go about the same distance as what I was short over here to see if I can get this to work quite right. All right, so we're going to lay this time... Let's see, we're going to lay that line in the same place and then we'll come over to the other side. I may be slightly off on this, but I'm not sure you'll be, even be able to tell. Now you could do this uh, with it all facing towards you on a border if you were going to put this on a border. There we go. And I'll line that line up on this, what would be the seam line, and we'll come back to the beginning. There we go. Well, let me show you that. Now I'm a little bit off, like I said I was going to be, because I didn't start at exactly the right point on the right hand side. I should have come back to where I started on the left hand side, and I was just trying to um, save some time. So I don't have scissors that I see. There we go. Oops, pull some of that out. What I want you to see is how that looks, and ordinarily these would be lined up a little bit better. Uh, gives you a neat border design as well. So some things that you can do, and what I meant was that over here I was further beyond than I was on the other side, so I took it off just a little bit. But great uh, little border design you can do as well.